Hi guys, Scott here from Nova Hardware, and this is my install and brief overview of the Cooler Master T2 and how I installed it and implemented it into my home server. Alright, guys, this is the Cooler Master Hyper T2. Uh, this is the CPU cooler that I decided to put into my home server, which I use for all of my video storage and just main storage in general. It's got 5 terabytes of storage, and I use it as a NAS uh, and a direct connected drive basically to my computer. Um, I went with this uh, because the stock cooler isn't very good at all. The Intel stock cooler just kind of suck and granted it was one that was designed for the Haswell CPU so it had a large copper slug in it. It still was not a good cooler and with the large amounts of files and things being transferred and the fact that the CPU is awake and under some form of load most of the time Granted, it's not under high load. I wanted to have some kind of more robust, better cooling solution. So I went with this. It was cheap. It's got two. It's got a 92 millimeter fan, two copper heat pipes, uh, which are, when they come down on the bottom, which you'll see later in the video, uh, there's four points of contact, which help pull heat away from the CPU. And it uses this loop type of uh, deal where the two copper pipes are in this continuous loop as opposed to having them end off. It could very well have just been a cost saving measure but they use it as a selling point and I think it's okay. Uh, it supports both AMD and Intel so this supports LGA 1150 in my situation but it also can support like AM3 Plus, it can support socket 775 which is for the Core 2 Duo if you want to go that old. It supports FM sockets, it does a lot and for seventeen dollars you really can't go wrong so let's get on with the video shall we alright so here goes with the install first off you got this styrofoam packaging which is okay uh, it's softer type of foam which is kinda nice and here I'm gonna be showing you the two copper heat pipes that run throughout and the four connect uh, actual points where it touches and contacts the CPU uh, now we're moving on with the actual installation of the mounting hardware for the Intel. Uh, this is basically a stock CPU cooler type of pin configuration. It's just one that I believe is really kind of there. It's not my favorite. Because as you'll see later in the video, it didn't exactly mount in the best way onto everything. Kind of got stuck and had a really rough time of doing it. So now we're just installing the actual screws into here. The screws went in pretty fine. The mounting is just very awkward for this. It has a 92 millimeter fan, which is okay. Uh, it pushes a decent amount of air. Uh, for the type of things I'm going to be using this little server for, I don't need more than that, to be entirely honest. Uh, this little fan should be fine, only one of them. You can mount a second one if you want to. It comes with the hardware to do so. I just didn't choose to do so because I don't need to. I just need it to do exactly what I'm having it do which is be as is. So the case that I have, which I'm going to put a link in the description below, it's a Logitech ripoff case, basically. And uh, it had an issue with one of its uh, cross members going across the entire. Moving on now to the actual installation. Um, more on that cross member later. You'll see it right here. It's in my opinion, one of the most annoying things about this case is the fact that that cross member was in the way all the time. So first things first, you got to remove the old CPU cooler and unplug the fan header. Then you have to get a microfiber cloth, or in my case, toilet paper, because uh, I'm in college and it was there, and clean off all the old thermal paste. You could reuse it if you really wanted to but I'm not going to. It came with a very little packet of thermal paste. It wasn't even a cylinder extruder like you usually get with most other CPU coolers or like you can buy anywhere. It is one of those types of things that's just a cost saving measure which makes perfect sense for this because it was only $17. So before you try and install the actual cooler, you gotta make sure you remove that plastic piece that goes on the bottom. And what I just did is I 
the first time recording this, I completely blanked and forgot to do that. So I had to re record the video. Next, you've got to push in these push pins in a cross configuration like the instruction states. Also, because it makes life a lot easier and spreads the thermal paste evenly. Now, fortunately for me, I hate these pins and they don't like me, so I had to use a screwdriver to try and get them turned properly. And a few of them didn't even go in properly off camera. I had to mess with them for a second. So these are kind of cheap push pins, but considering how much you're paying for it, you've just got to take that as a, yeah, I'm getting what I paid for. So the next thing to do is install the uh, fan header, which is one of the easiest parts of this whole thing. You'll see that that cross member is like just barely allowing the heat pipes to clear it. Like I don't know if a Hyper 212 would have been able to fit in here. So here's the completed look of the system now with the new cooler in. Uh, I removed that bar that went across because it just, it was so weird having it there and so little clearance because I move all the time for school that I was worried I was going to damage it in moving. Alright, well guys, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment below. Um, like the video if you feel so inclined and also subscribe for other great content. I'm also open to suggestions for other videos you guys would like to see. Uh, thanks.